welcome back to the channel. Well, I've been meaning to make a video on this gun for a little over two years now. If you've watched my channel, I'm sure you've seen it used in several videos for different things. But this is my 5.56223 AR. This is my first AR, and I built it pretty much right after the peak of the scare a few years ago around 2012 2013 it's when i built this it's built on an anderson lower and just to tell you about the timeline that i built it i paid i think 95 dollars for this stripped lower and that was about the cheapest i could find it at the time now since then the last stripped lower i bought uh, i bought two around the same time one that i built the 300 blackout on and one that's still sitting in my safe waiting to be built. Not sure what I'm gonna do with that one yet. I don't know which direction I wanna go with it. But those two strip lowers, both Andersons, I paid like 35 or $40 for. So that ought to tell you about the climate of ARs at the time I built this. Now this AR is kind of a hodgepodge of different things and I've still got a couple things I'm gonna change on it. Uh, one being the handguard here, and I'm going to put probably Vortex Strike Eagle 1 to 6 scope on here. So I want to get this set up to be kind of like a three gun type of AR, you know, more of a precision. It just has a standard kind of M4 cut barrel, as you can see there. It is an Anderson barrel. Most of the parts on here are Anderson, because at the time that was about the best I could afford and what I could find. It was either cheap stuff or really, really expensive stuff. So my budget at the time, I had to go cheap. Now since I built it, I have made a couple upgrades to it. One of those being the Wheaton Arms muzzle brake here. I've mentioned it a couple times in videos. It's a very, very effective muzzle brake. It is loud. It will make your teeth hurt after a couple magazines. And if anybody's standing within 15 yards on each side of you, they'll feel the wind. In one of my past videos, I think you can see Junk Food Zombie standing off to the right a little bit, and it's blowing his hair around. And he's like, oh, man. So, very effective muzzle brake. It's got the three chambers, and it's got the two ports on top that are off-centered a bit to uh, counteract for the up and right climb of the recoil of the 223 or 5.56. One of the other upgrades I've made to it is a CMC trigger right here. This is the first gun that I put one of these three and a half pound flat face triggers in. If you're not familiar with these, it is one of like the cartridge type of triggers. You don't have to assemble it. It's all in its own little housing. So you just put it in, screw the pins in, call it a day. Now I've put one of these in my 300 blackout. Love this trigger. And I've put Magpul grip, Magpul CTR stock on it. Now as far as the other internals, it's just got a standard uh, M16 type of bolt carrier. It is an Anderson. Now I've probably put, I would say four or 5,000 rounds through this gun and it's still very accurate. I don't know if I've mentioned it, but it is a one and eight twist barrel. So it's kind of the best of both worlds there. I don't think I've ever shot anything in it other than Maybe a few 62 grain bullets here and there, but it's mostly been 55 grain. A mix of brass and steel. I don't mind shooting steel case. Whereas extractors are cheap. Not that I've had a problem with it, but it's it's been a very reliable gun. And I have put this uh, MOE grip on it here. Not for holding it like this, but like that. And that's another reason I want to get another hand guard so I can get just a little bit farther out there and this one is very beefy I'll keep this hand guard I'm thinking of building a 223 upper for my SBR because I've got the 300 blackout on it right now but I can put a 223 upper on it no problem it's still an SBR lower and as far as this red dot I've got on it here it's just a cheap UTG I got on Amazon for like 40 bucks 50 bucks I don't know but it's worked it holds zero the only thing I don't really like about it though, it doesn't have buttons to turn it on. It just has this switch, or this knob here. 
and it does have a red dot and a green dot. I don't really use the green dot very much, but all I can say about it, we'll, we'll do some close-ups here, and let's shoot it. I did forget to mention one of the other changes I'm going to make is the charging handle here. It's just got the standard mil spec charging handle. Nothing special. I'll probably put the BCM mod 3 or 4 or whatever it is. It's got the medium sized latch that I've got in my 300 blackout. I'll put that on this one. And just to show you some of the internals here, like I said, it's got the M16 cut bolt carrier group. And you can see the CMC trigger there. It's an excellent trigger. Love this trigger. I would highly recommend it to anybody. And with that muzzle brake combined with the CMC trigger, it is so, so easy to get rapid shots off and keep them on target. And one other thing about this muzzle brake here, like I said, it's very effective and it's very loud. Uh, just shooting out here and they open, it's not too bad, but I've been at ranges before where there's a cover over you, like to keep the sun off, keep the rain off, and a lot of that comes back at you, and it's even too loud to shoot comfortably with just the earmuffs on. I've had to put plugs and the earmuffs on, so it's loud. Now I'm standing here about 15, 16 yards back, and... I'm gonna shoot a couple just standing and then I'll kind of brace myself against the bench here and see how accurate it is from this range. Now I need to get, when I get the other rifle built, I'm not gonna have a brake on it, I'll just have a flash hider, but that might be a while. So I need to get Junk Food Zombie out here with me with his AR and just do a comparison of the recoil that you feel. This honestly, feels about like a shooting a 22, a really, really loud 22 as far as the recoil goes. Let's take a couple shots here. And now we'll brace on the table here, take a couple more, see what we're hitting. Okay, not really a whole lot of difference here. This was four shots standing up, and these were three shots just sitting down, kind of braced at the bench here, or on the table. Pretty accurate gun. Uh, if I had the Strike Eagle or some kind of scope on it, I could pull those in a little more, but with it still kind of dark out here in the morning, and you know, with the size of this target here, I don't think that's too bad. Let's try a couple more. And for these shots here, I'm actually going to sit down at this fancy new structure behind me here. Somebody built it at the range last week. When I was leaving, they were coming in with this stuff. This will come in very, very handy on days when it's like 95 and the sun is beat down on you from up here. Those days, I don't like to come out here in the afternoon. So let's see how tight a group I can get sitting down. Well, the bench here is kind of dirty and nasty. It's got some mud on it. I guess somebody decided to stand on it for some reason. But I'm gonna brace a little more than I did the last time. So even with just this structure above me here, I can definitely tell a lot of the percussion coming down on me. I wouldn't want to shoot it a whole lot under that. Let's see how we did. So for those three, I just kind of had it braced against the magazine, holding on the bottom. And you can see, I got two pretty much in the same hole, and then one right here. But, you know, the groups did tighten up quite a bit. Went from about a little over half dollar size to nickel quarter size. 
So the accuracy capabilities of this rifle are definitely there. It's always been an accurate rifle and a fun shooting rifle. So in conclusion, it's a great rifle. I've had a lot of fun with it. It was fun building it. It's been fun modifying it. It's gonna be fun continuing to modify it. So let's take a few more shots here.